Glorious God, we thank you for this opportunity again to study your word. We thank God for his message. We thank him for all that he has done. This is the moment of truth with Yusuf Yakubu Fise coming your way. Before we commence our weekly studies again, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for last week. We thank you for the series on acting God. We thank you for blessing us with your word richly. We're here again. Let your spirit come and teach us. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We bless you for the opportunity that God has given to us all to share from his own word. This week, we will be talking about a serious issue that affects everyone. I say everyone. Kings, servants, queens and maids, presidents, governors and all over. We are human beings. Last week, remember, we talked about acting God. And we said those who act God, uh, uh, they become people after God's own heart. And for them to properly act God, they must live like a God, look like a God, and behave like a God. One of the things that we have to do if we want to act God is that we will reject a lot of things. It's not everything that comes your way that you will take. And so today our topic is reject that gift. Gifts are good things. Almost every culture imbibes the, uh, the, the habit of sharing gifts at periods of festivities, birthdays, marriages, and all sorts. Very important thing. And in fact, due to lack of uh, gifts, many marriages have been broken. Love affairs have been uh, brought to a sudden end because one of the parties does not give gifts. Many businesses have been frustrated because people don't give gifts. Now, but you see, is it every gift that we should receive? That's what we want to look into today. Like I said, the topic is reject that gift. Which gift are you supposed to reject? Let's remember, as I said, that the word of God in Proverbs 18 verse 16, the word says that a man's gifts make a way for him. It means that your gift can bring you favor. The Bible in Proverbs acknowledges this. But then we're going to look at some stories in the Bible that again go to teach us that it's not every gift that we should receive. We will take our anchor Bible passage from 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16. It's a story that is familiar to all of us. That's the story of Naaman, the Syrian captain who was leprous. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16, we see the prophet Elisha rejecting the gifts that Naaman brought to him. Naaman, we're told, was leprous. He came over to Israel to see the man of God there for his own deliverance and for his own healing. Now, he came along with him. The word of God says he came with 6,000 pieces of gold. He came with 10 talents of silver and then raiment, clothing, beautiful things. Oh, 6,000 pieces of gold. The man of God rejected these gifts. Why? Why? Will you reject such beautiful gifts, costly gifts? 6,000 pieces of gold in our days. We hear of leaders being corrupted by things less than that. We hear of people being corrupted by official cars, by homes that are given to them. You know, not up to 6,000 pieces of gold, but they are not able to say no to eat. Why? Why is it that Elisha rejected these beautiful gifts? When you go to the book of Daniel, you read also of sumptuous meals that were prepared for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
the keeper of these young people said, the king wants you to eat fat so that knowledge will be found in you, wisdom will be found in you. But Daniel persistently rejected. He said he never wanted to defile himself with the king's meat. Go again, you will see further that David, when he was to assuage the anger of God, having counted Israel contrary to God's own will, there was death in the land. And the prophet came to him and said, look, quickly set an altar. He went to the field of Arona. Arona was ready to give him the field free of charge. He said, king, oh king, you own everything. Please, you can take the land for whatever you want. David rejected that offer and said, no, I want to pay for it. Now, three examples have given us. And I want you to see whatsoever your position is in life. You must have been in this position, position of David as a king, as an official that has opportunity to have everything from his own people, yet he rejected them. Or the position of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where everything is laid on the table for you. Beautiful wine, good things of life. And they said, please take, partake. And they said, no. Then here, Elisha with 6,000 pieces of gold, yet these people said, no. I've given us three witnesses by which we build our discussions today. Why did these people refuse that? And why is it that in our generation, men of God, women of God, servants of the Most High, are not able to say no to a lot of gifts that come our ways? There's something behind this, and we must understand. First and foremost, I want to tell us that gifts, according to the Word of God, gifts can cause a lot of problems. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 23, the Bible says what? It says, a wicked man, he takes a gift out of his bosom to pervert ways of judgment. There's something the scripture is so uh, emphatic about. The dangers of receiving gifts. And so today we're going to be looking at some of these dangers. I will share with us at least four instances to show us the dangers that come along with different kinds of gifts. Let me make it clear. I'm not saying that totally we don't receive gifts. No. There are instances when you receive them. After all, salvation is a gift from God to us. There are some gifts that come from certain quarters. You know that they are not meant for you as a king, as a peculiar person, as a judge. Your profession, your position in life will tell you that certain gifts are to be rejected totally. Before we share these four points, I want to put this forward to us. That there is a philosophy behind gifting, behind every gift. There are motives. Motives must be understood clearly. We should be in a position to understand the signals. The gift of men and the gift of God are incomparable. You can't put them together. You can't compare them. Why? Because God, from a vintage position of a sovereign God, who knows that man cannot give him anything, gives us salvation, gives us liberty, gives us life, oxygen that we cannot give back to him. All he desires from us is just worship him. But when men give gifts, they expect something back. Is it the gift to African countries, gift to Latin American countries, from World Bank, from uh, International Monetary Fund, <laughs> gifts from developed nations to developing nations? They all have conditions attached. But the gift of God, the Word of God says what? It's without repentance. 
God's own position is such that he created all things and he does not need anything from man. So I want you to understand this topic from this point of view. When you are higher than someone, and you know the person cannot give you anything back to commensurate with what you have given him, it's a good gift. And you're not expecting anything back from that person. It's a different thing. But watch out. The word of God says, he that gives is always Lord over he that receives. And so we must be very careful. Even countries that are so fond of receiving gifts from different kinds of uh, organizations, bodies all over the world, continually end up being at the receiving end. Does that not surprise you? That those nations that perpetually have been given always are above always above and so there's something behind gifts so we want to quickly look at four instances number one gifts can be a medium of exchange of destinies Gehazi received a gift that brought leprosy to him leprosy to him number two Gifts that are given at the expense of the righteous. For instance, Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, she seized the land of Naboth and gave it back to her husband in 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 1 to 25. The story is there. What happened to the family? She died mercilessly. The husband died mercilessly. Dogs licked her blood. And so be very careful. Every gift that is given to you. Number three. Gifts can lead to mental slavery. The more gifts that developing nations receive, the more enslavement they find themselves inside. You ask yourself that question. It's very important. That's what we call Greek gifts, isn't it? They come with motives behind, with conditions, that you're not able to detach yourself from them. So as a man acting God, you must be careful. It's not every gift. That's why Elisha re rejected that gift. He rejected the gift. Number four, there are gifts that can lead to skilled justice. A judge, a leader, a king that is fond of receiving gifts from his own subjects will end up perverting justice. Second Chronicles chapter 19 verse 7, we're told that God is not a respecter of persons, no gifts. So God himself is not interested in your gifts. So long as they are not righteous, he's not interested in it. So finally, I want to ask you, are you fond of receiving gifts? Are you always expectant of gifts? Be careful. This year, 2024, there are gifts you should be able to say no to because they can lead to damnation. But there's a gift of God that comes. That's the gift of life through our Lord Jesus Christ. The gift of salvation. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto it. How do you do that? Except when you accept Christ. When you accept him, then you receive that gift of God that comes without conditions. I want to pray for you. Father, bless your children that as we walk through this year 2024, we will seek our gifts from you and not from man that is able to pervert justice. Give us the gift of salvation. Bless every listener and those who take time to share in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Till we come your way again next week as the Lord tarries in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you.